Hey, 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 hey there, everybody. Sorry about the slight delays today. It's been quite the interesting day here. Let me make sure that I balance out the audio for you. Cole's running in and out. So I hope you all are having a wonderful Thursday here today. Hey, Belmont. Hey, Ariel. Hello from Korea. Thank you for coming. Aminimo, Snuffer Stuffer, welcome in. Tony Escobar, thanks for stopping by. Hey everybody, welcome back to the bunker. You've made it. It's Thursday. We're only one day away from our lovely weekend. And uh, for me, I have quite an interesting set of things going on today. Uh, first off, you saw the thumbnail and the teaser. We have almost a, ha a Halloween possession here today of this CRT, which is a Sony PVM... 14L5, but this particular one is a D, like J, because it's from Japan. <clears throat> and uh, so I'll show you a little bit more about this. I, I have been working on this on Twitter, so if you've been following me on Twitter there, you'll know, you know a little bit more about what is going on. You'll have an opportunity to have a leg up on the competition there. And uh, I'm going to get to some shout outs here in a second. Thank you, everybody, for showing up today. First off... I really appreciate when everybody shows up here uh, and drops a like for me at the beginning of the show. It definitely helps things get rolling. I'll probably talk about a couple of off topics for the first 10 to 15 minutes here. And then I will get into the main topic, which is trying to exercise the demons that are haunting this PVM 14L5 today. And uh, so if you're coming in and this is, you know, you're late to the stream or you're coming in and watching this, and you want to skip everything and get straight to the fun of the PVM troubleshooting, I will post a pinned comment below in the uh, video, and you can skip right to that section. So anyway, everybody, thank you again for dropping in. Thank you again for dropping a like and helping out the show that way. And let's, let's get started on this Thursday. I hope all of you are doing wonderful. Uh, today is October 19th. And uh, it is already the 12th official episode of The Bunker. And guys, if you want to go back and catch up on any of the first 11 episodes, all of these are archived on a playlist at the top of the playlist section for YouTube on my channel, Retrotech. So um, before we get into our main topic today, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about warranties and how warranties... Oh, warranties, my friends. Warranties, 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 warranties. <laughs> I have some fun stories for you about true situations with a warranty. And I thought that would be a fun thing to talk about. Uh, but before I get into that, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to say some shout outs to some people who showed up today early. Uh, thank you, Mega Cards. Thank you, Ray Cerrone, for being here. Good to see you. Uh, EF Lover. Thanks for coming back. I got your name right today. Demon 20 child. Welcome in. Self-elected. Welcome as always. Some of you, I've already given you shout outs, so I will pertain to skip you this time. Kevin, thank you for coming. James Boone, good to see you again. Lord in Black, welcome in. Bill D, hello. Uh, Daniel Gonzalez, thank you for being here. And uh, Dave Hagg, self-elected, I think I said you. Uh, Ramus, Remus Racing Row. And... That's about everybody. And of course, thanks to Belmont, our uh, tried and true friend and moderator on today's stream. So first off, welcome in. Uh, we're gonna just, I just want you to kind of sit back and relax a little as I get into this first brief section of story time. Let the jazz kind of encapsulate you and get you in a nice, <laughs> a nice relaxing mood. And uh, wisp away your problems, okay? Just let them all go. And we're going to enjoy some time here. Definitely, look, if you guys want to hang out in the chat, the chat is always awesome. I've never seen really any trouble going on in there. So if you're here and, you know, you're just a lingerer, but you want to say something, go ahead and say hi. Nobody here will bite you. There's a lot of cool people in there. And they're, you know, that's why I do the shout outs. Everybody's really cool. Uh, it's been like a year since I've had to b uh, moderate or ban anybody that was uh, like spammers. And that's it. So thankfully, the stream has been 
a good clean place, a good fun place to talk about things. So, you know, take advantage of that and uh, let's get started. So just to uh, give you a little bit of a background here, um, I did plan on making, and I'll show you who's snoring if you're wondering. <laughs> Cole's back in there sleeping. So we'll, we'll watch Cole for a second and I'll go through this story a little bit with you. And uh, let me turn down the jazz just a little bit. I don't want it to be too loud. Okay, there, that's better. And um, so I was, I was setting up to film an episode on the JVC 20 inch D series CRT just yesterday. This was uh, the one that I did feature on the stream not too long ago. It was the one that, I mean, it's been the most popular episode. When I get you guys in a second, I'll show you some statistics. This, the show's been doing awesome. I, I just can't tell you. I appreciate everybody for really hanging with it and enjoying it and, you know, coming in. But <clears throat> I was filming, setting up to film this episode. And it... Um, it was literally the opening statements I was making, kind of introducing it, talking about it just a little bit. And the whole segment was filmed on my GoPro, Hero Black 10 GoPro. And uh, this is a GoPro that I've been using. Uh, funny enough, this was just about the one year point that I had had this, bought it, uh, and that'll all come into play into this story. So anyway. I got really frustrated because I did that whole opening se sequence, the whole filming thing of it, and when I grabbed my GoPro, I tried to shut it off and just hit the quick, uh, the quick stop record button, and instead of turning off, the camera kept rolling. It said it was stopped recording, but it completely froze up. Now that's happened like two or three other times. So I have to always open the battery and then pull the card out and try to recover the files, right? So I did that procedure. It's just on an SD card. Not very difficult. You unplug it, you plug in your reader. I ripped the file. It rips fine, but then it says it's corrupted. I tried ripping it a couple times, copying it, saving it, and uh, it was just corrupted. So I was a little bit perturbed, but I was thankful that it happened on the first shot or the opening shot of this video so I could just not have to worry about it and move on and, and kind of, you know, work on other things and let this video you know, it's not an urgent thing. So anyway, sorry to get drawn out here with everybody, but anyway, the GoPro um, stops working. I get online. I start trying to look on how, you know, to troubleshoot it. I find out that um, I could still turn it back on. It's working like it normally would. It's not working great, but I get in there and I, I've got an older firmware apparently on it. It's 1.2. So I go on to GoPro's website and it's, oh, GoPro, first off, has the worst app, so you don't want to really use the app. There's a manual way to go in, it says, and uh, update the firmware. So I tried to go find that, and funny enough, when you go to GoPro's website and you try to do that, they don't even give you the link. You, like, go do the manual here, and then it says firmware not available. And, um, you know, just to prove that, I guarantee you if I go over here to my dashboard and I pull this up, and if I went to the GoPro site... Um, look at this, it's already showing you stuff about the GoPro, but anyway, here, I don't want to do that anyway, but so that, that, that'll make my story go too long if I go and do that. But anyway, if you go in there and you try to update the firmware, you can't get the firmware. So I, you can open chat boxes with GoPro pretty, pretty easily to get some service. And I started looking through my books and I found this and it says here, like, this is one of the documents that was in my packet. It says limited lifetime warranty. And it says that, you know, the GoPro warrants this product for its useful life, not to exceed two years for products with electrical or electronic compo components, okay? So this was in my bundle. I thought I had a two year warranty. And I did have a bunch of other accessories. So, you know, maybe it was an accessory warranty that they gave me this <laughs> for, but anyway, I got in the chat room. Um, I started scrambling because I couldn't find my s receipts from this purchase. And uh, I started opening a chat, right? And they're like, well, when did you buy this? Uh, and I said, well, I think it was last fall, about a year ago. 
And so the first gentleman on chat says, well, why don't you update the firmware? You have an older firmware. And I said, yes. And he said, I will manually email you the link. And he did. He manually emailed me a link to a process on how to manually install firmware. And then he emailed me a link that actually gave me a firmware update to version 1.50, it said. So I said, okay, I'm going to follow these instructions just like it says. And I did it. I did it. And it freaking bricked. <laughs> it bricked the GoPro. Like the GoPro, if you turned it on after the update, all it would do is power cycle immediately. It would immediately turn itself off and then turn itself on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. And it would never fix itself. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I'm in the chat and I'm like, and he starts asking, oh, well, when did you exactly buy this? And I said, I don't know exactly. Uh, they said, well, we need your we need your proof of purchase. We need your proof of purchase. And I said, you're going to have to give me some time. So please open a case and give me a link to start sending you documentation. So immediately after this, and again, I was trying to make a silly video on the JVCD series, which was all postponed thanks to this fiasco with uh, GoPro. So I'm on the chat and I'm and I'm getting these documents together and I find it, I couldn't find the physical receipt from last October, but I find my credit card statement from my Costco account. And this is where I bought the product from was Costco because it was a bundled Costco deal. So I said, hey, I bought it from Costco. Here's the receipt for that transaction. And I didn't find the receipt. I just found my credit card transaction. I copied that. I sent that into them. And I realized that yesterday was the 18th of October. And so I actually purchased it on the 14th of October in 2022. So one year and four days ago, I purchased it since when I reached out to GoPro. So I'm talking to them and I'm, I'm, I'm like, hey, I submitted that. And they're like, okay, well, we have to get approval because that's not really a receipt. And I said, okay, well, if I find a receipt, I'll open another chat and refer back to this case. I went, uh, thank God for Costco. Let's listen to what they do. If you're a member of Costco, they archive your receipts for two years, two years. So I was able to go in. Thankfully, I could find that since I knew it was on October 14th that I bought it. I found a copy of my physical receipt archived on Costco.com. And I was able to just take a PDF of that and upload it and send it in. So I got all that uploaded. And then I uploaded a picture of this, my warranty, which I just showed you. And I said, you know, this thing was a package deal I got from Costco. So I realize, I realize there's no, uh, I don't know. This says it's under warranty. I didn't even know anything else. Well, then the person that I got next in chat, when I uploaded all this stuff, I opened up another chat. I said, hey, I put all these documents in. Here's my case number. Will you check it out for me? The guy comes back. He's really cool, but he's like, yeah, this is out of warranty. And I said, what do you mean it's out of warranty? I said, well, Costco in the United States now, now only warranties their products one year. I said, what? One year? Okay. And I said, that doesn't make any sense. One year. And he said, well, hang on. You know, I'm, I'm sending this through to approval since you've sent all this documentation and you've been nice and, you know. We're gonna we're gonna try to work with. I just have to get a supervisor to approve this, and I and you know I was sitting there, so I was just being patient, and um, they looked at all the documentation, and and then they were like, I don't know if it's gonna go through, and I said, well, I just want to remind you that it was your first customer service specialist that you know we both have recorded the whole thing here, of our conversation. I said they actually sent me an individualized file with firmware on it that bricked my camera. It was actually working before that. And he said, you know what? You're right. <laughs> and surprisingly, they agreed to give me an RMA return and I've sent the camera back to him. I got the file. I got everything mailed off yesterday. So they're supposed to send me a new one back. And I was very cool. I wasn't like bashing them saying, Hey, I have a YouTube channel. I could go talk trash about you. Um, but I was, I was dumbfounded because I there, seriously was, there was a second in my brain that I thought they were going to deny my camera and uh, make me, you know, uh, they were going to go by this warranty and say that I had gone four days past the warranty, which I guess they could have, right? They could have done that to me, right? But thank God they didn't. So 
I do get a camera back, but if you think about that, I mean, if the problem isn't just that I had invested, I had invested four hundred twenty dollars on the package, but I had also invested another two hundred dollars plus in accessories for this camera, and. So I would have had to go back and bought another one of these cameras that was pretty much probably going to be defective. Like this next one, I'm not going to expect more than a year out of it. And I figure if I get two years out of this kind of a piece of technology, I'm okay with that price for $600 for two years. But $600 for one year is very hard. And I would have had to pay $250 to replace this camera. So I am thankful that that went my way. But it was an interesting thing about warranties and how they absolutely are like almost a joke. Think about that one year. And I've been asked, what do I do if, uh, if like, people have asked me about warranties for repairing CRTs? <laughs> and I was like, how, uh, I mean, I don't want to be a jerk, but how do you expect me to go and, and honor some kind of warranty? These are big companies like GoPro that are trying to weasel out of every warranty. Not, not this one, because they actually didn't try to weasel out of every warranty. These guys did everything, at least to help me. But some companies, and I'm, so we can't say GoPro, is they actually did go through and help me with this RMA. But it's uh, a one-year warranty is just a joke. Like, and I, but I, here's another thing: I probably could offer a one-year warranty, but. And the only reason I say that is because I've done numerous jobs for people and I see them year in and year out at conventions and I'm always like, hey, how's that monitor doing? And they're probably surprised I even remember that I serviced or, or you know, something fixed their CRT or re restored it. And so anyway, I don't even know what the heck the point of that. I'm sorry if I bored you to death. I hope I didn't run everybody out of like our, our show already today with that silly story. But uh, well, it looks like we got a decent sized crowd going. We're about 20 minutes in. This is about the point where we're going to jump over and start working on our main topic today. Okay. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to first look at some stuff here that I posted. Uh, but if everybody wants to know what we're looking at, it's this. It's this discolored mess of a PVM. Uh, and I'm not really sure what's wrong with it. Okay. And so we're going to try to see how much troubleshooting we can do in about the next hour. Um, so hopefully my, um, you know, everything will go well. Maybe we'll get lucky and figure it out. But either way, we're going to try. So everybody, this is the big moment. About 20 minutes in. This is where the timestamp's going, just to remind myself. So welcome in today to our special topic. And my guest appearance, uh, or my special guest today, is the Sony PVM-14L5. Again, this is a Japanese model. It's not an American model. It was imported. And it was meant to be serviced by me. And... Yes, it is the D14L5J. And yes, it does look dim, okay? What happened here was this. This was supposed to be sent to me to service, and it was actually sent UPS Air in a nice package that survived shipping from Japan, okay? It survived shipping from Japan, but of course, when UPS got their hands on it, they couldn't help themselves. They just had to smash. They just had to smash our poor girl here, the D14. L5J. They just had to go in there and just kick the thing. I don't know what they did because they smacked the back and it uh, cracked the neck board and it uh, busted the back shell on our poor darling here. And so it's a, it's just a tragedy what they did. And of course, we opened up the old insurance claim with them and they have been dragging their feet now since July. It's been three months and of course they're not doing anything. And um, oh, they're just so disappointing sometimes, you know? So oh, <laughs> all right, we got a $5 super chat from Robert Catillier, Catiller. Sorry if I say that wrong. I won't be able to hang around for today's exorcism. Wanted to say hi and drop a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up like button for Steve, everyone. It helps. Thank you so much, Robert. I mean, how awesome is that? Robert wanted to pay five bucks to have me say that for you guys. 
So please do it for them and for me. It does help the show. It really does. It will make 10 new viewers come in. Every time like a like gets hit, it results in 10 new viewers. Uh, they, It's just the way the algorithm works. It's just the way everything happens on YouTube anymore. It's like if you hit, uh, that's all you really need to do. You don't, you know, super chats are nice, but you can just hit like if that's really, that's free if you're able to. And yeah, when you do that, it results in 10 new views. It's just like that. Like the last video, I think had 170 likes, 1700 views. That's the count for the last live show from last week or no Monday. All right. So anyway, back to this poor 14.05. Oh, thank you, Steve. You're, you're so kind. Maybe you can help me out here. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Don't worry. We'll, we'll do our best. So anyway, what have I done so far? Like I said, if you if you follow me on Twackers or Twixers or Twixies or Xers or Twitter, uh, you'll know a little bit about what's happening here. And this may play audio, so what we'll do is we will pause. If I can get to it, I will pause jazz for a second. And let's expand this little player here. And uh, it should have volume. So I'll turn that audio up a little, and we'll watch this little clip I made and posted to Twaxers. Hey there, folks. I'm in shop with a 14 uh, L5, and the colors are just all out of whack. I'm not really sure if this is only a problem with the magnetism, but we're gonna I'm gonna try to set you up here and show you a way to hopefully correct this. Hopefully, it'll correct itself right away. Let's try. You guys have seen this a number of times, but this is the first thing to try. Screw it up first there, and then I'm going to go. Getting close. No, it's not helping. Let's try again. Hmm. Interesting. Definitely going to have to pop this open because something is messing with the magnetism. Maybe the yoke is off. All right, and that's kind of where we're at. Sorry about that blast of jazz to your ears. I didn't... <laughs> anyway, that is where we are at. And uh, now we can... I actually go over here and look more at this thing live. So that's the only thing I've done. I turned it off after that, or I didn't turn it off. Actually, it's been running the whole time. Now the tube looks like it's seen its days, right? It's not very bright. The red looks low, low, but also the colors are just ugly. Something's going on in here. Something is definitely going on. See how it's not like keeping balance. It's not it's not keeping its purity. It's actually getting like worse. So I don't know whether see how it's it's also like there's something that's shorted out. So my guess is there's either something that's shorted out in here, and maybe we can see that. Uh, or something happened to the tube, possibly. So the plan today is to first go in here and we're gonna inspect around. We're gonna open this thing up. And then we're going to, uh, we're gonna, you know, if unless we see something that's like right off the top, that's loose, that's busted, that we can fix, we're gonna hook up the tube tester to this, okay? And hey, everybody, hey everybody, it is my 16th wedding anniversary today, so I know my wife's not watching this show because she's too busy doing, doing her own thing. But I love you, sweetie, just in case you are. <laughs> I doubt it. You know, too bad. But that's okay. Drop a like for our anniversary, if you don't mind. That's my shameless plug and request. So, let's just go ahead. Well, I guess before, I'll show you a couple more screenshots right here. Uh, look at just look at how bad these colors this is supposed to be that's white But man, I feel like I can see like some burn in this tube when I look closer at it 
That's supposed to be red. And that's supposed to be green. And that's supposed to be blue? No, I don't know. I'm confused now. Like, the colors are either inverted, because something's damaged. This is, uh, well, this sets multi-format aerial, so it can actually do any, any area, but yeah, I'm in TSC. But it's, uh, it can do, you know, any region. This monitor can. So anyway, we're going to try to see if, if we can pinpoint anything that's causing this. Look at that. See, that means there's like a ground thing going on too. Hey, Stan. Buried Bits, welcome in. Bill D, thank you for coming. Thank you, Devin. Yeah, this is the Japanese variant of the 1405. Now, um, I'll start taking this apart. And I did test, you know. Oh. All right, get that out of the way. Get some cables out of the way so I don't destroy them by rolling on them. Will it zap? No, this one probably will not zap. Man, my camera's starting to glitch out on me, guys. I'm sorry. I might have to switch over to the main overhead view if that happens some more. Let me get this up a little bit. Sorry, I don't mean to make you dizzy there. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better so you won't be so dizzy. You can see what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna remove this shell and I'm sorry about that camera glitch and I'm really gonna replace this with the new... Thank you, Race. I'm really gonna play... Uh... Hey, Nelly. I'm really gonna replace this camera when the new Logitech camera comes out. So, let's get going. Yeah, I don't know. It could be that, um, it could be, my guess is it's either something's busted and there's a short either on one of the boards, maybe in the power area that's controlling the degausser, uh, maybe something, I don't know, <clears throat> um, or the, the yoke has had something happen to it where it's shifted possibly or the purity ring on the yoke may bust all the warranty on this camera as well past. I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. Thankfully, the live stream cameras are fine, except for that one. Good grief, man. I have had, I keep forgetting how much trouble I have with new cameras. Everything new stinks, right? Everything new just isn't built with... It's built with planned obsolescence in mind, I guess. And no, that's not my stomach growling. I know it's lunchtime. And is our boy Cole, who's just out. Okay. Hey, Toki Doki, Tuki Dookie. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the show today. Glad I lucked over. And saw. Welcome in. Thank you for dropping by and stopping and uh, saying hi, because uh, that's what it's all about. We're here to have a good time. Look at some killer hardware, and uh, hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll fix it. I'm going to show you how this case is busted. There's, there's a big plastic chunk out right here. Let me get the side screws out. Yeah, the cameras I use on the, the main camera right here is a Sony Alpha 5100 that I've had forever. And it's about the best, most solid streaming camera I've had. So you can change the lens and it's it still does 1080p 60, even though I don't run the show at that anymore. Because apparently doing that just eats up too much of the system's capabilities and sometimes it causes things to crash. 
Hey, Mercury. I'm good, thank you. It's my, as I mentioned before, if you're coming in here late, uh, we're working on this 14L5 and uh, we're going to hopefully troubleshoot and find out the exact issue. It was damaged by our friends UPS or UPS here in the United States. And they, uh, you know, they really haven't been honoring their, not even warranty, their insurance. And so we're gonna try to see if we can maybe save this CRT because it was damaged in shipment by them. And uh, so, you know, the possibilities are endless today. If we fix this, if we come in here and it's like a little thing and we fix this, it will be the happiest day uh, for me. And then I'll get to go have a wonderful anniversary evening with my wife. How about that? And I don't know what just bumble umbled down there. Maybe a screw that I didn't get out. Okay, so first off, uh, this, when I got this in, this whole back plate was completely dislodged and pushed against the neck board. You can see where it's actually broken off some plastic up in this section and then there's a big crack, but I was able to get, you know, it didn't actually make it unusable. It's still got a crack in it. See, it's still cracked and it would be separated if you removed it at that part. And then there's that piece of the plastic missing right next to the rivet. But aside from that, I was able to get this back together. Oh, well, here's a problem. Look at this thing. So first off, this is completely just decided to disintegrate now. This deflection board is just like barely hanging on. So it could have been leaning against something causing distortion undoubtedly so let's try first to just maybe we can move this out of the way a little bit golly what a mess and uh, run another test we can but check that out check that out like that thing is just free floating that and the board behind it Holy, that's just ridiculous. So that's not good, right? So first thing, oh, well, yeah, okay. So I can tell you one thing, watch this. Watch this. So if I, <laughs> I'm gonna try to zoom, I'm not, I don't wanna damage anything. First off, there's like cracks in this board but there were some cracks and I fixed them. Yeah, there's a crack down the center of this board, but I was able to get everything patched up on there. Okay. Thank you, Belmont. There's really nothing left on this mount. And I'm, somebody does have a, a, a file to print this arm. I don't know. And I don't have, I might be able to find something that's better than this because this is literally just hanging on by a thread. But I do think I figured out what's causing the purity issue, and it's this thing on the daggum uh, neck of the tube. And I don't have, ooh, I do have the coal cam, which maybe I can get over in there, but I'm gonna try to, um, okay. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go try to find a yoke that's rep representative of this, and I can show you what I think has happened, okay? Check this out. Oh, check it out. Let's uh, let's take a look at another yoke. How many of you guys got this at home? How many of you guys got boxes like this in your house? <laughs> Sony PVM CRT yokes various. Let's just do a mystery grab and see what fly flies out. Oh, look at this. Got one here. Okay, fun stuff. You never know what you're going to see in a live episode of The Bunker. So, sorry if I busted your eardrums there, but let's go to the facial cam. Hey, Chris, welcome in. This is my friend, Mr. Deflection Yoke. And this is one of the most important 
one of the most important pieces of hardware in a CRT. And I know maybe some of you guys have never seen inside a yoke before. Look at that. Isn't that just oh, sexy hardware? Oh yeah, baby. Look at all that luscious copper. <laughs> right there. Baby, that if that doesn't if that doesn't wet your whistle, I don't know what does. So you're got one of the sides of these is vertical, one is horizontal, and then there's just loops on it, and uh, that's what it's doing. The whole monitor is set up sending signals, and part of it is the deflection, and this is telling the screen where to go and keeping everything correct for your deflection, right? It's pushing everything out there, trying to get everything to the end of that tube and make your deflection and your geometry on the edge look super nice. And so this is a good high quality PVM yoke that would be from a 20 inch PVM. Now this is not the 20 L or the L5 version, but what it is is bigger and it has the same basic hardware on it that this one has. So you've got a couple of, and you could, I've got videos, I've got videos on this uh, for days, right? So you've got your yoke rings right here. There's three sets of them generally. Some have more, some have less, but most color tubes are gonna have three sets of rings. Uh, I believe it's the furthest two. Yeah, like the last two closest to the yoke right here. Those actually control your purity and you can rotate them and spin them and it will change the purity on your tube. You'll be watching it in the color. You'll start end up with these colors in the corners. So you set that right and then you move on. Well, the other part of this is there's this like lens magnet over here. And this is, it's always glued in. You see how it's got that big hunk of, sorry, I know it's focusing, like trying to focus. See how it's got this big hunk of glue right here? Let's see if I can get that, baby. See this little piece right here. It's glued in right here. And uh, let me see. Well, this one's really in there and really glued good, right? I don't think this one's budging. But anyway, that's a piece. And what is what happens is if that glue breaks, which has happened on this tube, I can't get it. This glue is too good on this older one. But it's, it's much easier to break on the L5. So what's happened is that's broken free. And now I can pull that in and out. Watch, I'll show you. Yeah, that's why. Hey. Keep these away from the salvagers, from the scrappers, okay? What do you think? What do you think a scrapper is going to do with that? They're going to have a heart attack. Crackheads are going to go out there and be living like, uh, you know, a king for an hour. All right. So in this yoke, which you can see right here where my hand is, it's not... It's going to be difficult for me to show you everything. Let me move this a little bit out of the way. Can you see that right there? Can we see that? Let me see. Now this is going to be a little grainy, but I'm going to expand my picture for a second and we're going to try to zoom in there and it's going to be grainy. I apologize. But we're going to try to get a little bit picture. Uh, I'm going to try to get a better, better shot for you to be able to see exactly what I'm talking about on this L5. And again, maybe we're, maybe I'm barking down the wrong tree. But right where my cursor is, is that piece that I've been explaining to you on this yoke. And it uses this white glue, which is much easier to break through. Watch this. Yeah, see that's been... That's been pushed in. That's actually been pushed in. This is it. Ow! Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, folks, I just hit my daggum funny bone on the edge of this. <laughs> my knee on the edge of this. Under the table. Oh, you can't make this up. Ooh. Oh, so you gotta love it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Back to back to back to composure, Steve. Here, okay. <laughs> here's here's this piece on this yoke, but 
If you look at the back of it, it's got magnets on it. Uh, it's got some magnets right there. I'll flip it around for you. And what happened was this got that that deflection board broke in shipping and got smashed into the yoke and it pushed this in. Push that in. And when it does that, when it does that, it's going to throw the purity off. And it will never be adjustable. That looks like the only thing that's moved. Man, that smarts, you know? So what I'm going to do, we're going to try to get this set up. We're going to try to get this reset. Well, actually, let me go back, and, and I don't want you to have to look at that. Why don't you look at that one? No, I have to let you look at this one to change it. I'm going to reset the camera. No problem. And um, what my, my goal here is to reseat this part back in here, and I'll line it up with where I about think it is, and then I need to somehow suspend this out of the way to safely try and test this. And I should be able to just give myself a little bit more uh, room with this wire bundle right here. And, uh, gosh, it's just, it's gotta be something like that, right? So I can set this down on top of that heat sink right here. If I can just keep it from shorting on anything, which is a strong task, strong, big thing to ask here, right? That's that. Now I'm going to try to slip this in here, back in its spot. Right behind there and then right in there. And there we go. Where do we think it was? Maybe about there. I think it was maybe there. May need to be pushed in a little bit, but I think, I don't know, let me see. We're gonna start, first off, I'm gonna start right there. I'm going to start right there. Hey, negator. Tell us a bad joke. A bad yoke or a bad joke? <laughs> that was actually pretty good. That actually is. So, we may be on to something here. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to just power this on. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to set it up stably and get everything run into it prior to me actually powering it on just to make sure I don't blow anything up short anything out and let's see let's see if we can fix this let's see if we can get this one to work whoo goodness now I shouldn't have to worry about only using I mean I'm using S video right now but that doesn't matter this problem will show on all any resolution, any input, because it's a purity problem. So it's actually born. This 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 P, this BV PVM. Sorry, not BVM. PVM is born October of 2002. So let's congratulate it on turning 21 this month, and hopefully we can help. We can help her celebrate with a lovely beverage if we can get her to fix herself up here. All right, so before I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just shut the power off to that surge protector so I can plug this in and not be worried about anything right now.
that. That's what she looks. Her memory is driving me crazy. Lonely and blue. Alright, there's a bunch of things. I'm going to loosen up some cables over here so I can give my deflection stack a little more space. Stack on there. Just set up. Let go. Yeah. See, there are there, the cables are longer, so you really don't have to do anything. But I can give myself a little bit of space right there so all this stuff isn't just, you know, in danger of always shorting out. Oh, baby! Come on. And look at this thing. Crazy. I don't want that to short out on anything, so I'm just going to let that... <laughs> we'll just let that guy hang out up there. I'm just going to let that boy hang out up there. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is safe, right? It's totally safe. Ooh. Totally safe. Totally safe. Maybe we should get some helping hands involved here. Okay. Cool. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. <laughs> that actually doesn't look too bad, does it? So, all right, folks, this is your big chance. This is your big chance. Drop me a like and let's, let's hope it helps. Drop me a like for this attempt. If you can, if you haven't already, like I say, every time you drop a like, it helps. It helps us get some more viewers in here, which is awesome. Now let me plug my S-Video. You might ask why would I do S-Video, it's because it's a lot less cabling than having to deal with trying to put a, a SCART input and everything in the back of there with all that other crap. I'd need five sets of those helping hands. <laughs> so, let's see. Alright, this is our moment. This is our moment, folks. Let's see what we can get. Turn that on, we do have power. Okay, make sure nothing's bridged. Just one last checker. Checkeroo. Okay, it's turning on. I can hear it. I can hear those phosphors firing up. We say no sink. No sink, okay. Oh. Well, eh. Oh, that's too bad. Doggone it. I can tell that we're not any better. No. Let me let me wiggle that around and see if that helps any. Doggone it. Well, well, unfortunately, that's not, that's not the problem, because it's not affecting it in any way. Well, that only leaves us one thing to do. Like, let's test this tube and see what the analyzer says, uh, and, and just go from there. So, yeah, it's time. Let's, let's rip this sucker back apart, turn it around, and we'll stick on the, uh, We'll stick on the, uh, the tube tester. I'm gonna power everything off. And... We'll get to some real hardware here. We're gonna have fun, even if we can't get this thing to work. Because that's the, that's the unfortunate truth or reality when it comes to shipping damage. It's that it could be a number of things that get broken, or 
things that you, you know, you can't, it's very difficult to find. Oh, there's always a risk of me getting shocked, you know? There's a risk of the CRT getting shocked. There's a risk of everybody getting shocked. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna pull out the, uh, tube analyzer. Oop, there go my helping hands. Thank goodness I didn't need them again. Let's try this out. Now, the interesting thing about the, my tube analyzer is I have to go in here and match. I have to match the, uh, and this stuff doesn't matter. I don't even need to turn it on for the, this analysis. What I have to do is I have to poke on to all the, uh... Woo! Look at that thing. I have to poke on to the proper points in this tube. So we might need to go in... No, I don't own one from Japan. I wish I did. We're gonna need to go here. Let's 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 go over here for sir. Um, I'm gonna try to find the service manual for the tw for the 14L5. And I mean, I know this isn't the 14L5, but or the same one, but it is the. Let's see. I should have the same neck board pin out. So if I... There, guys. I'll, we'll switch over to my dashboard here. I'm waiting for this manual to load up. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Sometimes archive.org, I guess, is just too many things on it. All right. The 14L5. Let's see. Uh, we need to, we need to check the neck board here. What I'd really like to see is... Ugh, if the neck board on this will show me any more than that showed me. Because I, I don't have an exact adapter for the L5. I have to go by the circuit board and I have to manually clip to every, every pin on the tube. <laughs> Oh, I don't see any cir- where's the Dargon circuit board diagram? Oh, it's not in here, is it? Sorry, I know I'm just scrolling down this service manual, but there usually are circuit board pictures in here. Oh, there we go, maybe. There's some flowchart. Flowchart, flowchart, where's the circuit board pictures? There we go. Okay, that's our input board. That's a daughter card, that's some other boards. All right, let's see. What board is this? this? Is the C? So we gotta find the. There's the C board, I think. No, that's a B1. M. Oh my. There it is. There she is. So if we go in here. So I have to individually connect each one of these, but none of them... <laughs> Here's the problem. None of these pins are marked with what color they are. So I don't know... Shit. That's disappointing. Wait. No. Right? Hot dog. Let's, God bless Sony. Uh, if I had a 14M4U, I could figure this out because they mark their tubes. Let me see, oh, there's no, the damn tube number's under that. Under that. Um, what I'm looking for is Is the tube pin out? So maybe like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see that there would actually be a pin out. 
uh, listed anywhere uh, for this without. I don't know that off the top of my head. Man, I'm looking. So uh, sorry, hey Keith, I'm looking for the damn pinout for this tube uh, that's in these. It's the. It's a L5 tube. I'm looking for the pinout so I can hook up my tube tester adapter to it. So I need to know what each color is. The G, H1, H2, G1, G2, which H is just on the same circuit, so that doesn't matter. But the, I need G1, G2, green, blue, red. Google Maps. <laughs> I've been trying to Google. I've been trying to Google. Yeah, I'm not really finding it. And I know that I'm going to just hit myself in the head because if I, uh, I wonder if I go into the Sony PVM 14 M4, no, that's not the same tube, is it? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. If maybe a BVM 14 F may have the same tube in it. F, uh, let's try that and see. We're gonna we're gonna pull up that manual side by side, and uh, let me see. Okay. <sighs> Thanks, Belmont. Let's see if we can't. Pull up this other manual. And we'll go to the... I'm going to scroll down to the circuit boards on there. And while I do that, you can... See, my friend Cole is still down here. This is ridiculous. Like... Why is the Internet Archive so slow today? They've been under... They've been attacked... like um, sometimes you just can't get these m manuals to pull up so I'm sweeping through this here's what I'm looking through just in case you want to know is um, this manual to try to find again the service sheet to see what that neck board shows us. Look at this part on the BBM there. Contact your local search. Yes, I boarded you. Did I? Does this? Let me ask you, Sony. Does does uh, using a CRT rejuvenator void your CRT warranty? Oh, thank you. That's not it. No, that's the G board. Nope. BC board. Nay. I'm about to go ballistic because there needs to be a better place to have all this info. I should ha I shouldn't have to like dig 20 minutes to find the damn 1405 pen out for the tube. Because this is going to prevent me from being able to do this today because I'm going to run out of freaking time. Is this it? That's the PA board. Nope. God, this is a pain in the ass to look for. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, UPS. You've ruined everybody's day. So, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and just try to hunt through this crap. If, uh... Discord DMs. Okay, let's see if, uh, Keith's got something for me. Let's, Keith, let's see what Keith's got for me on Discord. Ah, cool. So this is... This is my pinout? Oh my gosh. 
Where'd you get this? Here. This one I'm supposed to be looking at? Oh, okay. Good. Oh, thanks. I don't want to feel stupid. Thanks, Keith. All right, so with Keith's help, we may be able to get this plugged up. If I can get this out of the way. So is that inverted? That picture, is that inverted? H1 and H2 are on a loop, so I know that that should be continuity. What did I do to my back? I've been working out so hard, man, I hurt my back. Team effort, that's the good thing about everybody here, is like, see, we're helping each other conquer. Conquer things, so this should be like these two? Or these two? So I believe those are the heater pins, because they're... Shouldn't, now, am I wrong? Shouldn't the heater pins be shorted? Right? Keith, is that right? And then, uh... The H1, H2, and then the G1... Wait a second here. Why are there like so many G's on this? G13, G2, G12, G11. Damn, Keith, I'm I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought the H H's are on the same circuit. Right, so see even like right there probably shows that they're on the same circuit and they won't. But nothing else should be on the same, uh, sh or it's shorted. I'm looking at these, and these are all basically the same, right? G1 minus 2 over here, G2 minus 2 over to this, G2. Only thing that's G2, that's minus 2, no, that's not even a G. Okay. But G4, 2, right? Well, that's focus 1 and focus 2. Focus one and focus two. Let's get this. So if I'm, if I'm, that's. So G11 would be the very first one. G11 is the very first one. Then you have H1, because the focus pots are at the bottom. Damn, this is confusing. <laughs> I don't understand why this has got to be such a pain in the neck, but it, it's definitely not easy. It's not easy. I mean, I think that's right. I think that it's inverted. I know that's the H's. I just don't... Uh... <sighs> I just don't know that it would make any sense for it to be flipped the other way. But, I mean, there's really not much hope for this tube anyway. There's G1, H2. So, it's not going to do anything if, if I have it hooked up wrong. It's just the, the sensor won't work, right? It's like, it's not going to, I'm not actually sending anything in there to blow it up. G2, red, green. Blue H1. There we go. So there we go. We've got. Uh, I'm hooking them up now. I know you can't really see. Let me show you. See, I'm hooking these probes up to each pin. I've got G1, H1, H2, and then there's G12, and then there's color blue. Uh, but I don't want to hook up to G12, I want to hook up to G2, which is after color blue. Because if I look over here, 
at the dashboard. This is where I'm at. I've hooked up G1, H1, and H2, and then I'm skipping G1-2 and I'm going color blue. And then it says I'm going G2 after color blue, so that's where I need to put my G2. And I got blue, green, and red, and that's the only thing left. I got blue there, so let's get the G2 on. I hope this is right. <laughs> I think we're good. I mean, he told me that we're just testing it. We're not going to zap it yet or anything. So there's the G2. Now we're going to go color green. Color green, G1, and then color red. So we're going to go color green, skip one, and then red. And that's it, folks. Let's see. Uh, let me show you. See all those probes right there? They're all just connected to a single point, which we've used the guide here to get to. Yeah, bless, unless that's... That wouldn't make any sense, right? Why the hell is that inverted? Because it's like the bottom of the... You know, it's like the board's upside down on the picture, and it's confusing me. So this has been calibrated. I'm going to set everything back. All right, good, good, good. Here she is. Your friend and mine. Your friend and mine, lovely BK467. Let's get this hooked up and get an analysis here. All right, so I've got this, I just hooked up this. Plug it in. And I just want to say folks, let's all give this uh, wonderful PVM 14L5 our best today and tell it Thank you for donating itself in the name of science to whatever end this may have. And in that vein, there goes the G. G1 plug. That's nice, huh? Don't worry, we're turned off on here so I can plug that in and get my G1 back. I want my G1 back, baby, back, baby, back, baby, back, baby, back. Chili, baby, back ribs. All right, let's get some barbecue sauce on these ribs. Get this juice fired up, this little monstrosity. So let me see if I can get a good view, or maybe I can get all this in the same picture for you folks. Let me move my multimeter. And... Let's see if I about, let's see about setting this right here. So you can get a good view of what, what we'll be looking for here. Look at that, you can see everything. Now to just get the test, this is just a test we're running. I just have to set up my BK here. So the, the monitor is obviously not plugged in. There's nothing plugged into the monitor, okay? It's not turned on, anything like that. It's just hooked up to the tube. So, the first thing we want to do is, is this is going to run at 6.3 volts. So we need to set that um, for our heater voltage, and then we can set up our G1 voltage over here to 50. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this from off, mine is in such bad shape, to set up. And just moving this, you see how it swings this, see how this goes up and down? I need to set that to 6.3. There we go. 
And then this one over here, I can set to 50. Whoops, that's the wrong knob. Set the G1. And as I turn that to the right, that goes up. We'll just hit 50 on there. Right there. Okay. And then, now this is the part where I have it, if I have it wired wrong, this should just not work, I think. And that's the set to cut off, which is the next section. So you set cut off, you go to set cut off, and then you need to set each one of these individually to the number one, and it's actually working, so we got it set up right. So there's a zero on this scale. You set that up to the number one. Same thing on the green. See how I move that and it goes up or down? Same thing on the blue, up and down. Ooh, look at that one. You see how that one just went up? What on earth is happening over there? Let's let that settle. You see how that cut off jumped all the way up like that on that red? You probably can't see it because it's it's gonna be difficult to see, but that's how, I've got each of them cut. I might let it sit there for a second just to make sure everything's balanced out. And uh, Man, I wish I could really zoom in on this, but it's going to be hard. If, if I end up zapping this thing, it won't be today, I don't think. We'll, we'll come back, I'll clean this tube up, and I'll record that if I need to. So, there we go. Everything's set here to run this test, and what we should just be able to do now is click this thing over to test, and it should just give me the levels of each color and, and how, how much it's, it's actually working or not. And the only one that was showing up as any good was the green. So maybe I don't have it hooked up right. But we're definitely not like running any other tests, but the others are way bad, way bad, and green. So I don't know that... That's interesting. That either tells me that the other two guns are basically bad. There's no shorts, right? So when I have it in test, if there were shorts, all these shorts would be, lights would be going off. So let's go back to setup. Again, this keeps, this stuff keeps drifting. It makes me wonder if these blues, if I've got these blues and re reds right, or the blue and red on the right, on the right thing. Or if they're on another. We'll try one more time. Set the cutoff on the test. Nothing. All right. So this will be a great. Oh, maybe the G1s are for each cathode. So that means. Damn. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's test that theory. If that's the case, then I should be able to just shut this off. Keith has a good point. This my each G1 on this, you may have to test them each individually. May have to test them all individually. So, like the G1 I used goes in the middle though. And it should be connected to all the colors. Unless there's a short. Anyway, let's try the color. Let's switch G1 from G11 to G112. Seven. So G1, I'm moving that from here to 7, which is in between blue, 7 is in between blue and H2. And that's, I've got that on the right pin, okay? Yeah, we, I mean, it can't hurt it, I don't think. I mean, this thing is already in a bad enough shape. Right, and so, let's see what happens. All right, now I've got it moved over. And we're going to return this on and just do everything all over again. Uh, this shouldn't need to change. No, it's all good. Set the cutoff again. And look at that time. Yeah, that's way up there. Okay. Try to set each cutoff. Right at the... And last time we got a reading on green. 
So maybe Keith's on the right track if we get a reading on blue or red. Hey, Koala, good timing. We're just trying to test your tube. How funny is that? This is his, his CRT. All right. Well, let's just see if we get any different results here. Oh, Keith, you're a freaking genius. Look at that. This time we got the blue. This time we got the blue tested. Now the other ones aren't testing. So let me go back to set the cutoff, make sure that's all the way down. Yep. And then the blue. All right. Finally, let's move it to red. So let's move our G1 probe. G1 probe to red, which is pin 11, which is between green and red. Does I see it right there? I'm gonna shut down the machine again. I'm gonna move G1 to the pin between blue and red, or I mean green and red, right? G3 is between green and red, which is green and orange on my pokers. So that's the pin right there. All right, so let's see if we can get a result over on this one. That's, let's see if we get a result on this one. It's either that or I'm doing this insanely wrong and it's just magically giving me a reading. Okay. Everything's good. Set cutoff values. Let's drop these guys down. And we're hoping to get a reading on red. This time. Theoretically. Theoretically, right. These are individual browns, I guess, for each one of these lines. All right. Here we go. Let's see what it says. Oh, yes. We found it. Look at that. I knew the red was no good on this tube, too. The red is super weak. We saw it. Even if the color purity was balanced, the red's weak. And check that out. Pre-test. Set cut off. Look how bad it is. The red is really bad on this tube. It's not that it's, it's not, I knew it had a lot of hours just from the way it looked. But look how bad that red is. That's why the colors overall never looks good. So that is what's causing this, uh, the tube's definitely not good. It, I mean, the tube definitely has a bad, bad, bad red cathode uh, in there. And that needs to be cleaned. So you could rejuvenate this or restore it with this, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm not gonna do that right now because that would just be too climactic and I'm not ready to really do that yet. So we'll save that for an upcoming uh, adventure. It's, it says it's not a short, there's no shorts being read. I mean, being read. I mean, there's no shorts on the analyzer. See, let me show you. That's what Keith is asking. If there was a short, when I run this test, one of these would light up. There's these little bulbs in here, and it would say like, short, short, leakage. You would have leakage on one of these, red, green, or blue. If I had leakage, this one would be blinking or it would be solid. But, there are no shorts, so there's a possibility to like rejuvenate this, but I'm not gonna just do that right now because it's been such a crazy day. I don't wanna mess and I don't wanna mess it up and make a mistake. I wanna make sure I do it all right. So I'll have all those directions ready for next time. Red Dead Redemption next stream. <laughs> I like it, Suffer Stuffer. You might have just gotten uh, gotten to name the next stream on uh, after the weekend on Monday. So. We'll see. That's, but that was a lot of fun. I know that we didn't actually fix it this time, but that's okay. 
Like we didn't. Yeah, it's UPS. They're the one who had the, who caused the fault. They're the fault here. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you all so much. Thank you for hanging out with me today on my wonderful 16th anniversary. I'm gonna go have some fun this evening. Also, my lovely, amazing JMU Dukes are six and zero, oh, and they're ranked number 26 in the nation. That's the last last. The, you're the odd man out, right? 26 out of 25 so they play tonight at marshall at 7 p.m so i'm excited to watch that and hopefully they'll kick it to 7 and 0 and i'll be happy after a nice weekend and so will you we'll get back together next monday thank you again if you've come in late i'd really highly recommend you go back and watch this show um especially from that 20 minute point on where we did all the diagnosis and and things on this crazy set and uh, I, I think it's it's all a great learning experience. I love any time I get to check out and use this. Um, oh, let me turn it off now. The CRT tester. It's a lot of fun. It's always great to verify that it actually works and that it works on Trinitrons and tests them. And yeah, if you want to follow on Twitter, absolutely. Thank you, Belmont. I do a lot of stuff. I post there daily pretty much. So if you want more, you can find out behind the scenes stuff really there. Uh, but that's it for today's show. I really appreciate you all for showing up. I will see a lot of you guys Monday or everybody Monday if you want to come and be back with me. Uh, I was going to try to do a special stream, but it will be a late night stream if possible tomorrow night. I'm not promising anything yet, but if it is, if it does happen, it's going to be very special. I will tell you that much. And if it doesn't happen, I'm going to reschedule it for another night. Uh, because it's just so much going on this weekend for me. Thanks again, folks. I'll see you Monday. You'll have a wonderful weekend. And uh, go see if you can find any CRTs in the garbage, right? Go do it. See what you can find. And then we can talk about it on Monday. If I find one, I'll definitely let you know.